Hello, I'm Rafael Fonseca, a hematologist at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I'm here to talk to you today about multiple myeloma. Uh, multiple myeloma is a cancer that arises from the bone marrow, and uh, it's a cancer that arises from the malignant transformation of cells that are called the plasma cells. You will see people refer interchangeably to plasma cells as the myeloma cells, uh, but under normal circumstances, plasma cells would be cells that help us uh, fight off infection. These are cells that produce antibodies. Uh, these antibodies chemically are proteins, and therefore you will see the, chain, the terms being used interchangeably. And we will talk about proteins, we'll talk about immunoglobulins, but we're all talking about the same thing. This is a substance that is produced by the cells. Um, myeloma, it's uh, not that uncommon. It's three times as common as leukemia. And there's nearly 20,000 people diagnosed with my myeloma every year in the United States. Uh, myeloma is a condition that primarily starts from the bone marrow, and we don't see a lot of cells in the circulation like you might see in leukemia. So the blood counts are, for the most part, uh, normal, with the exception that they will show anemia. And the reason you have anemia, and uh, that's a low red cell count or a low hemoglobin, is because the myeloma cells living inside the bones and in the bone marrow will take up the normal space that is used for the production of red cells, and that's why one of the symptoms that patients will have is anemia. Other features of myeloma include a damage and erosion into the bones, what we call myeloma bone disease. Patients will sometimes have uh, what we call lytic lesions or punched out lesions, and that is loss of bone structure as a consequence of the myeloma growth. Um, sometimes uh, there's so much erosion, and as you know, the bones contain a lot of calcium, that a patient will have very high calcium levels, what we call hypercalcemia. Lastly, uh, the proteins, uh, uh, the small fragment of the proteins can be filtered down through the kidneys, and occasionally this will be very toxic to the kidneys. So a subset of myeloma patients will present with either renal insufficiency or frank renal failure. So those four things define the complications of what we call myeloma, and that is uh, often uh, referred to by the acronym of CRAB, C for calcium, R for renal abnormalities, A for anemia, and B for bone disease. While myeloma remains, for the most part, an incurable disease, our ability to treat the disease is much better than what it was five and 10 years ago. For many patients, myeloma has become a chronic condition, and the number of therapies that are available are sometimes five, six, or even seven nights of therapy uh, for patients diagnosed with this condition. The treatment of myeloma has classically incorporated the use of high-dose chemotherapy with stem cell support, uh, what we call uh, also bone marrow transplant. Uh, for the most part, this is transplant done with your own bone marrow, self-transplant, or what is uh, uh, referred to as autologous transplant. Uh, but we also uh, are introducing more and more so some of the novel agents that are available for the treatment of this disease. There's two broad group of agents that we're using for the treatment of myeloma. Uh, number one are called proteasome inhibitors. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, the prototype for this is, is bortezomib, also known as the Velcade. This is an injectable medication, and it's something uh, that has been approved because of its ability to control the disease. The other group of agents includes uh, um, a drug such as thalidomide, lenalidomide, and uh, now most recently, pomalidomide. These are given in the pill form, and this is another way in which myeloma can be treated. How to select the agents, when to introduce them, when to combine them, it is all a part of a complex decision process that is best made with your provider at the time of the consultation. Uh, we believe it's crucial uh, to be very engaged as a patient, to gather as much information as you can, and to talk to your physician so that you can decide on the best long-term plan for the management of multiple myeloma. Lastly, I'd like to make a brief mention of, of the use of, of uh, prognostic markers and genetic tools uh, for, for this uh, planning for the myeloma therapy. As you will hear both in the literature through some of the patient support groups and the communications that are available for patients, then more and more we're moving into this area of personalized medicine for, for the disease for multiple myeloma. We will oftentimes uh, uh, require that we do testing for genetic factors, and, and we bring that information forward as we select what therapies and at what time to use them for a given patient with myeloma. Thank you very much.